Hey everybody, Rocks and Box 90 here with part 2 of my Limited Dragons of Tarkir set review. And we're going through all the cards in the set with an emphasis on sealed and limited environments. That way you guys have a bit of my perspective on the cards for limited. But this is also a discussionary series where the goal is to draw out your guys' opinions and what you guys think. And I've, I mean, I've looked at the cards, but none of us have, well, at least I haven't effectively played with them. So a lot of this is speculation based on the overall set and uh, the environment of Sealed. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about the stuff down below. But we're going to dive in with today with Blue, Ancient Carp is the first up. It's kind of, bleh. It's, it's average. It's not the card you want to be landing on turn five. I'll just say that. Anticipate is going to be much better in a more constructed environment than a limited sealed environment. It's not bad by any means, unless you sort of put it back in your on the bottom of your library, so it's not even like you're losing the cards uh, at instant speed. So it's it's a fine average card, but m unless you're running a very non-creature spell heavy deck, it's not a card um, that's going to be that's going to be a regular. Uh, it's it's at least average though. Bell Toll Dragon is the one of these dragons that will probably see play because it's hexproof, and that's the only reason why these dragons, this dragon cycle, I really don't like. Blessed Reincarnation seems really strong to me, at least because yes, they can search your deck for a new card, but if you do this on their turn, exile their biggest creature, and then they get something scarier, you exile that too. And yes, the chances of them getting, it, yeah, it could backfire in your against, like it's not in your favor, but more likely than not, this could be. Uh, very swingy, two for one for four. Seems very strong. Clone Legion is probably not going to be something that happens, but if it does, it would be super sweet. So tell me about it if it does. Contradict is too expensive. It's not good enough. Dance of the Skywise. I can see this card blowing, making things blow out, but more likely than not, you're effectively trading two cards for one if it works. Not the best thing ever. Durgor Nemesis is... Uh, not that great, but it is going to be hilarious if you can attack with it and then flip it up. Because then you get a 7-6 attacker, who's also defender, but is attacking already. So that's funny. But otherwise, he's kind of bland uh, since he can't attack at 6 mana too much. Dragonlord's prerogative seems pretty strong to me. I would probably run it if only just by mid-game to be able to refill your hand seems smart. And the fact that you can make it uncounterable is even awesomer. There's a lot of counter stuff that would be... That's worth avoiding. Elusive Spellfist seems really strong. Cheap creatures with evasion that also can block. Super sweet. In case in ice, it's a cyborg card, but it could be it could be decent. Glint, uh, it's basically there to save your dudes, but more likely than not, it's it's a very defensive card. I'd much rather something that's offensive than defensive. If you find your deck is super slow and controlling and stuff, maybe, but it's below average. Goodle Lurker, I like this guy. Because late game he can be uh, he can be that card that lets you chop your opponent's life total down. Uh, he's also a pretty decent aggressive card, and he works well with bolster. Seems decent to me for one drops. I usually don't like one drops, but one for one one unblockables, like the death touch, is a a, a kind of card that's a little bit better by definition. Gurmark Drowner seems decent to me. I like that you have the option to filter through your deck. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible. It's it's at least average. A 2-4 body is not bad, and having that flexibility, it's at least average. Icefall Region is super powerful. I would run it 100%. Illusionary Gains I like a lot, because more likely than not, it's anytime your opponent plays a creature, so they could mess around with you, and you could give, play something small that you have to switch it off with. But the fact that it doesn't leave the battlefield, you can just reattach to something else, it's going to make it difficult for them to play, or they'll have to play around it. Seems very good for 5 mana control magic. Learn from the past is not that great. Living lore, I like it. It's a little expensive, true, but I like the value from it. The fact that, um, that it can be a decent body for cheap, and that you have the option, you may sacrifice it to play that card without paying its mana cost. It's I, I like it a lot. I think it's very strong and limited. Mirror Mockery, at worst, it's a passivism. At best, it can be game-winning. You throw it on something huge from you. It seems very powerful and limited. Monastery Lore Master is pretty bleh. It's not that great. Mystic Meditation, I kind of wish this was 3 mana. Come on, Wizards, we can't have something like Compulsive Research or whatever. It has to be 4 mana. But, card draw is card draw. 
Negate is not that great. I think more likely than not, most people will be leaning towards creature heavy decks, at least in this format, and so it's not going to be as good. It's a sideboard card. Ajutai Interceptor is, eh, he's okay, I guess. It's not exactly the card you want to be playing turn four. Maybe it's a little bit of the Megamorph mechanic, and that's the only thing going for it. Ajutai's Breath, I kind of don't want to tell my opponent that... I'm going to play it again. They're anticipating it, but you the fact that it's instant speed, you do it on their turn, you rebound on your turn, it, it, there is value there. It's a pseudo removal. Ajutai summons five for four power. That flying seems very fine, for especially for common. Palace familiar, I don't like it that much. Profane of the Dead is amazing. Uh, I really think that it's going to give you... Uh, you play it turn four or five, you're going to pretty much sweep their field which is sweet, and it's a good body. Carsey Deceiver, if you're running Morphs, this card is a very strong card. Otherwise, I would avoid it. Reduced Stature, very powerful, especially with the Dragons. Shore Crash Elemental, it's a little risky, but with 1-2 to two color focus, very playable, very powerful. Sadisi's Faithful, I, I think it's very solid. It's a, an 0-4 for 1, with the flexibility you can bounce your opponent's creature if you want for an exploit. I, I think it's pretty solid. Sight Beyond Sights, not that great. It's okay filtering, but I don't I don't love it. It's more on the average side of things. Slum Grow Sorcerer, I like that it's flash flying and can exploit. So not only can you play it during your opponent's turn, if you play it and exploit, you get um you can also counter a creature spell. So it's kind of a very flexible, very playable uh counter spell. Slumgar Spell Eater, another, it's a decent counter spell. It's a 3 4 if you flip off of the Megamorph, but uh, that's the only reason to consider running it was because of the Megamorph. Otherwise, it's 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 fine. 3 for 2 3 is fine. Average, at least. Slumgar Scorn, very viable counter spell in this format. If you're running dragons and you have blue, definitely consider running it. Skywise Teaching, I think, is, yeah, it's kind of a pseudo mana sink, but it's only, it's very narrow. So it's okay in certain decks, not very good in many decks, most decks. Stratus Dancer is amazing, pretty much expected. It gives you flexibility and removal. Tigum Strike, I don't like that my opponent will know that it's coming again, but it does give unblockability, which very game swingy later game. Updraft Elemental, very solid card. There's a lot of uh, three power going on. Good, good blocker, good flyer. Void Squall, it's a little slow. I kind of wish it was four mana, but removal is removal. And if it's what you have to work with, it's decent. Youthful Scholar, we've seen cards when it enters play for four for two, two, you draw a card. He's when he dies, draw two cards. I don't love him. Zephyr Scribe is the final card. Draw a card, discard a card. So you have a loot effect on a two one who can untap at instant speed. Uh, he kinda. <laughs> He, he's a hard card to judge. I'm leaning more towards good than bad, but I'm not quite sure about it. If you guys have an idea of how he would fit, please let me know down below. So those are all the blue cards from the set. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Definitely let me know it below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, then please tap that like button and stay tuned for more of these limited set review videos coming to you shortly. Thanks for watching, everyone. As always, Rocks and Box and 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.